So we're just having a little aside or an add-on to what we filmed at the UG series. Basically, we had everyone going through, with ourselves included, of their post-workout nutrition. So we just wanted to kind of go over what everyone chose and like great things that they did and things that they could improve on. We really think you should be kind of aiming towards the post-workout nutrition, whether it be like a day you know, out hiking or a day at an event like that or just your typical day um, living your life Overall, we're extremely happy with what people chose. There's always room for improvement. That's why we're kind of doing this after uh, after the bell kind of segment. So let's kind of start off, uh, kind of critique uh, Mark and I's own uh, nutrition for that day. We were both just trying to get food in us as much as we could. That's why I went more of the kind of a chili-ish, uh, paleo chili. I could have done a bit more of uh, the starchier carbs, like sweet potatoes. Um, could have had a bit more electrolytes. Later in the day, we had we found a source of paleo water and we were crushing those like crazy. Uh, so I had about three or four of those, getting my electrolytes and sodium back in me, which for a long day like that, I just noticed it started to cramp up, so that really helped me. Um, with Mark, regards to Mark's, uh, same idea, some more starchy carbs. He was on top of the sodium levels. Uh, we could have done maybe some uh, some more fat in our diet to kind of get us going through the day. I had minimal fat. I had some coconut products later. Mark could have used a bit more as well. And what else do you see there? Uh, I know for myself, like, there was quite a distance in between the first and second workout. So I actually started to get um, like hunger pains almost. Um, so that was indicative of me not having enough fat. That's just kind of how I know my body works. So I had to kind of crush out a lower bar like 15 minutes before burpees and the handstand push-ups. But luckily it didn't. You know, come up on the field or anything, but I probably could have avoided that. Um, as far as everyone else, uh, Kate had a really great example of what you should be doing. She had some chicken, which she knew. It, there seemed to be like an overwhelming theme with everyone eating chicken. If that's the meat you like, go for it. If it's you know this like men's health chicken breasts or whatever are the healthiest, it's not necessarily the truth. But often people think uh, you know anything palatable is great. So if you want to go fish or beef or any sort of good protein source that works for you is totally fine. Um, sorry, go ahead. I was just saying, I agree. I think you saw like Chuck having the chicken thighs with something like darker meat, a bit more fat on it, a bit probably easier to chew, you don't need as much water, um, but also it has a bit more fat content, which is kind of important. So it's not just a lean protein source, so a bit a little bit different. Kate's as well, although it looked like a little dinner, if she can stomach that, awesome. The one downfall there is that it might be too challenging to stomach, but if that works for it, then that's all you can ask. She was missing a fat source, so I probably would have tossed in some coconut flakes or something like that, um, you know, and she'd kind of work it a little bit better that way. Um, who else was next? Eva was the next person that we uh, interviewed. She did a good job having her like easily digestible baby food um, that is a higher carb source, but because of the actual quantity of it, if you look at the grams, it's not very high at all. Um, she had a chicken salad with avocado, awesome, awesome post-workout meal. Generally, if it is post-workout though, you're trying to get a little bit higher carb range. So she did go with the protein and the fats, but by adding some, even some chunks of like, uh, you know, roasted pumpkin or something like that, just to up it a little bit, would have been all for the, the better. Totally. And kind of like with uh, Steph and Brad, same idea, salad, just trying to get food in them. The, the primary carb source is uh, green lettuce, which Eat as much lettuce as you can, guys, but in a situation like that, we, yeah, we're getting we're going after starchy carbs, doing what uh, you did with the baby food, a couple packets of that, plantains, whatever you can get in you, squash, a pre-made butternut squash or something. Plantains eat would be good, easily, to, especially for that situation where you're going to go into something else. I think that'd almost be the best. Yeah, and it tastes like pancakes, so it why not? It tastes like pancakes. Some maple syrup and that stuff, some honey. Uh, that's the main thing. Another point we want to touch on is uh, the time window, like Mark was talking, we had the variability, we didn't know when we were going to be doing our last workout or second workout, it got delayed, he got hungry, so it was hard to plan for that, but one thing, we, we knew we had a rough estimate about an hour and a half to two hours, so we were all eating a big meal immediately, which is good, because you need time to digest, you need time to relax, so you can digest your food, going right into the other workout, or not fully coming off the workout we just did, being that kind of that fight or flight mode, and properly digest. You might get the trots, you might be running to the bathroom like a lot of other competitors were. So it's important to be relaxed, take your time, eat a solid meal. If you have about an hour and a half to two hours, if you're within that window, less than an hour and a half, uh, liquid food or just minimal food, something like maybe that's when I would say maybe go with a protein shake or something.
something, that something minimal, so you need time to digest that. Like Mark was saying, he's worried about up chucking on the field. So you gotta plan that window of, uh, of uh, operability or prime window. Another thing is uh, once you get within 15 minutes, nothing, just stick with a bit of water, maybe a bit of coconut water, a bit of uh, salt in water, but no food after that point. Um, for Brad and Steph's salad choice, like clearly they didn't make it at home. There's obviously like a number of salad choices when you're going to the grocery store. Um, the Caesar one, that's cool if that's what you eat, but um, you could make a better choice. Like often they have like a garden one or a berry one, or sometimes what I'll do is I'll just pick up a garden salad because it's a cheaper one and buy a little pint of uh, blueberries or something like that and toss it in to make it a little bit more colorful. Um, so you can kind of help yourself there. The dressing, yeah, it had fats in it and stuff, but it's not the best fat source, obviously. So we kind of work it from there. So pretty much overwhelming. Everyone had like awesome, awesome ideas that had great base, but obviously there's always room to improve. So including us. Yeah, including us for sure. And then as Bill was saying, like if it's post-workout in a competition scenario, or I know we were talking earlier and like when I go climbing, it's a bit about a 20 minute effort and then there's about an hour of rest. And so you're kind of gaming the same. If you're just doing post-workout after say your workout at seven in the morning or something, you're gonna be looking for a balanced meal and to consume it pretty much as quickly as you can, you go over this a lot in your nutritional coach. Yeah, and I, po I tell our, all our members like, if your first meal or post-workout is the most important meal, it'll be your biggest meal of the day. That's when you gotta have those starchier carbs, you gotta have a great protein source. When I say protein source, real food, whether it is a chicken breast or beef or fish or something, real solid food, not just always a shake, that's our old bodybuilding kind of idea. It's okay in them every once in a while. Solid food, as soon as possible, ideally within 15 minutes, but if the way life works out, it's an hour, an hour and a half, that's fine. Your body's still gonna use the nutrients, but you, you gotta think about, you gotta plan ahead before you even go to the gym, what am I gonna be eating post-workout? You shouldn't be caught out and then running to Mickey D's right after. Now what would happen, say, if like someone worked out at six or seven, obviously they're gonna go home and have breakfast, or at nighttime, five, six, or seven, they're gonna go home and have dinner. I know it works good for me. Mm -hmm. What about the midday people? Yeah, the 9.30 crew, and I used to be part of that, that was a tough one, because you come home about 10.30, and you wanna have a big meal, and then lunch is within a couple hours, and you're kinda of screwed off for dinner, so it's kinda of all mixed up. I'd come home, I'd have a same way, a balanced meal of protein, bit of fat, good starchy carb, but basically snack portion, take the hunger off, then within probably hour and a half to two hours, it would be in the noon time, and then that's when I would eat a full meal again. And then emphasizing more fat, that second or that real lunch meal, have a bit more fat in your diet. Cool. It's good to have something in your system uh, so you're recovering well. Um, the whole reason we do this, as you kind of realize for the competition, is so we can bounce back that next workout, whether it's the next day, a couple days, or within a couple hours. It's all about recovery. It's not about just, uh, eating to be healthy, it's about bouncing back as well. Cool. Bill and Mark's Paleo Adventures, episode two in the books. Oh yeah.